Hi, my name is Jacob Allard, and I'm going to talk to you today about um, the lack of government funding and why we need to increase the funding to modernize our infrastructure. So a little overview, I'm going to kind of introduce the, the last big push to modernizing infrastructure, and then I'm going to give you a couple examples of economic, global, social, and environmental issues on why we need to make this uh, investment, and then my concluding remarks. So uh, the, the last big push in uh, modernizing infrastructure was in 1956 when President Eisenhower introduced the Federal Aid Highway Act of 1956. Uh, he delegated $25 billion to uh, the infrastructure budget, an extra $25 billion, and that ultimately produced more than 41,000 miles of highways throughout the country. And uh, one of the most popular ones you guys probably know is I-75. So for the first economic issue, it would be the lack of government funding. Uh, so each year we uh, set aside $416 billion to infrastructure budget. Uh, but only 96 billion of that comes from the federal government, while 320 come from the state governments. And this has remained stable for the last three decades, so we haven't really fluctuated much with this, this budget. And even though our annual GDP is increasing, um, and this is staying the same, we went from delegating 1% of our GDP to down to uh, only a half percent. So here you can see from 1945 until 2015, um, around the 50-55 area, that's where Eisenhower made that big push in spending. And then it kind of trickled down a little bit, and from 1985 to 2015, so the last three decades, you kind of see it's a fairly straight line, so it kind of plateaued out a little bit. And according to the American Society of Civil Engineers, on an academic grading scale, um, our infrastructure rates as a D plus. So it's not very good. We're close to failing. So an additional $4.6 trillion needs to be invested to this budget by the year 2025 in order to raise it from a D plus to a B. And out of that 4.6 trillion, 1.1 trillion has to go specifically towards roads and bridges, as you can tell in Ohio, aren't the greatest. But uh, as of right now, only 55% of this 4.6 trillion is committed to the year uh, 2025. And here you can see the bar chart. The, uh, the gray bars are what has already been committed to the infrastructure budget by the year 2025. And the orange bars, which is additional onto the gray bars, as what we need extra for each of the subcategories of infrastructure in order to increase our grade to a B. So second uh, economic problem is the influence on the job market. So uh, the total labor force in the United States, six and a half comes from transportation and communications and approximately one percent go to electricity and water. And these are directly infrastructure related jobs. So seven and a half percent just come from these two subsections of infrastructure work. So by increasing the budget, we will have a direct impact on at least 7.5% of the labor force, but the larger impact will come on uh, indirect to the total market. That means like all the uh, small companies or even the large companies that uh, create and process the raw materials, the tools necessary to get these jobs done. So it will have an all-around trickle-down effect uh, spread across the entire United States. So the results of increasing the, the budget, like I said, um, it's in, going to increase our productivity, uh, more money, more jobs, it's going to be, it's going to cut down on our construction time, and we're going to get a lot more done. It's going to decrease labor costs because we're going to get uh, the projects done more efficiently and uh, more timely. And it's also going to increase the economy because when we get more done, when we put more back into the economy, it's ultimately going to grow. So going on to global issues, uh, you can think of the global issue, the number one issue for us right now, terrorism. Uh, there's been 510 attacks since 1995 on U.S. soil alone. And there's been almost 3,200 casualties resulting from this, the biggest one obviously being September 11th. But um, it's not the actual uh, terrorist attack, the direct attack, that is causing all of these casualties. Over 3,000 of these deaths have been results of failing infrastructure after the attack. So crumbling buildings, bridges, all that. So with increasing the funding, uh, we'd be able to upgrade our security systems to prevent this, this, uh, this global threat. And we'd be able to reinforce critical infrastructure, such as the White House, the Pentagon, um, a lot of uh, like Area 51, and places like that. We'd also be able to heighten safety measures on terrorist prone targets, so nuclear power plants, anything that will, will have the largest amount of casualties with uh, one single attack. You know, we cannot eliminate terrorist attacks all, all by themselves. They're all, we're always going to have that lone wolf. We can try to minimize as much as possible, but we're not going to be able to end them. But we can minimize how many casualties there, there, there could be. 
we could have saved thousands of lives right here with uh, increasing the infrastructure budget. Second global would be international trade. We tend to trade intercontinentally quite a bit. 40.5% uh, of our trade comes by air and 23 comes by shipping. Uh, we have, out of all the subsections of infrastructure, our shipping ports and our airports are at the very bottom. They are in very poor condition. This is causing delays on, on the daily um, our ships that are idling off coast and uh, airplanes that continuously have to circle the runways waiting for an opportunity to land. So for the first social topic, uh, we're going to talk about the poor roll quality. Uh, like I said, one by with CNBC, $1.1 trillion needs to be invested directly into roads and bridges by 2025. 20% of all roads in the United States are graded as in poor condition. So as you can tell, like I said, out in Ohio, like all the potholes, um, all, the, all the, um, the expenses there. And it's a, a challenging task to uh, travel for most motorists to get to their day-to-day -day routine with all the road closures and stuff due to poor quality roads. Um, it's also very expensive for your average motorist. Um, on average, um, anybody that drives every single day they are losing $1,000 each year from repair costs, excess fuel consumption, just because of the quality of the roads. And um, you might not think this is a, a large sum of money, but when the average um, annual income of an American citizen is $35,000, that is actually a pretty big chunk out of their budget. When talking about environmental, um, we've got to talk about water quality, because it's not just buildings, bridges, roads, um, water lines, sewer lines, all the pipelines, underground work, that is also part of the infrastructure budget. And uh, the largest uh, you can, the largest example of water quality happened, uh, started approximately three years ago, you all probably know about uh, the Flint, Michigan water crisis, where they switched water supplies, and because of the lack of the budget, they were not allowed to take the necessary corrosion control protocols and all that to ensure uh, safe, uh, a safe transfer over of water supplies. So when they transferred over, all the rust layers detached, and there was a very, very high content of lead in their, uh, their water, causing several uh, lead poisoning cases, and the water was unsafe to drink. And um, they're actually still dealing with this problem today. Second one would be green technology. So um, according to Oxford Dictionary, uh, defining green technology is technology whose use is intended to mitigate or reverse the effects of human activity on the environment. This is a, a fairly new, uh, very trendy topic in uh, civil engineering and infrastructure related uh, buildings. Um, it also brings up the, the climate change when we're talking about um, reversing the effects of human activity. And some examples of green technology would be like uh, harnessing wind energy, um, solar panels, hydroelectric, so like dams, harnessing the, the movement of the water by dams, and geothermal, so har harnessing the uh, heat from the ground um, also could uh, produce electrical power. So some of the pros of green technology, um, it could eliminate or at least minimize a lot of air and water pollution. Um, it could eliminate um, the need for cleaning up oil spills and it will eliminate a lot of destruction of land due to um, harvesting non-renewable resources. And this could potentially save billions of dollars. Just, uh, just this past week or two ago, uh, a oil line underneath the Mackinac Bridge was hit by a freighter and they're estimating $5 billion just for the cost of the cleanup of that one oil spill. So right there, we're already saving billions of dollars. Second issue is the uh, infrastructure-related injuries and deaths. So for the poor roads, 14,000 deaths occur every year just because of the condition of the roads. Uh, for railroads, 1,400 injuries and 77 deaths have occurred since 2004 uh, because of the lack of uh, the budget. We're not able to install the PTC safety systems. So they will not be able to detect anything within the uh, rail line and that will make direct uh, impact with the rail cars. Uh, with our water systems, each year we have 14 deaths and 431 illnesses just because of unsafe drinking water and the corrosion control protocols. And 36 dams have collapsed in South Carolina alone, leaving 19 dead. And that was also due to the poor quality of the dams. So this is costing us thousands and thousands of priceless lives and $4.6 trillion uh, invested can't even compare to the thousands of lives that we've saved on an annual basis. So to wrap it up, we have trillions of dollars are being wasted. We need to invest the 4.6 trillion dollars and uh, by doing this we are going to save trillions and trillions of dollars in the future. 
and that will also automatically or that will come back and it would actually help us uh, minimize our national debt. Um, we are making by having uh, poor infrastructure, we are making harmful impacts on the environment and this green technology with the increased budget will be able to minimize those effects. Uh, we have thousands of unnecessary deaths directly related to the infrastructure that could be prevented each year if we were to increase the budget. And one of the famous quotes, famous English quotes that fits perfectly for this topic right here is you have to spend money to make money. So we need to, we have to spend that initial $4.6 trillion and in the long run, it's going to actually make us money. Thank you.